I can't get over how good that is. It has the snap, it has the pop. So on my plant-based meat journey, I have been making some veggie chickens, veggie bacons. I've done a whole series on mushrooms that taste like other things. One of the things that I get requested a lot is sausage. Now there is a ton of plant-based sausage recipes out there. Some of them are really great, honestly. But the one thing that most of these plant-based sausages miss is the sausage casing. Now you can buy veggie sausage casings, but again, it doesn't have the same snap, the same texture as a real sausage casing. Now companies like Beyond Meat have figured this out with their Beyond Sausage, where they don't do what some companies do and they just do a plastic casing that you have to remove. I don't know about you, but I have made the mistake of frying plastic in a vegan sausage casing. That was really messed up. Now Beyond figured it out. They made a sausage casing that is 100% plant-based, safe to eat, safe to fry up. It gives sausage the texture of real sausage. This casing that Beyond uses that creates this snap and bite and texture is calcium alginate. Now calcium alginate is specifically a mixture of calcium and alginate. Today we're gonna to be using calcium chloride and sodium alginate to make this mixture. Now alginate is a molecule that is found in seaweed. Technically it is a carbohydrate that is known as a polysaccharin. Now sodium alginate is the sodium salt of alginate. So it's extracted from a brown seaweed. Commonly it's used as a stabilizer in ice creams, yogurts, cream cheeses. Now besides food uses, there are medical uses for it. Commonly it's used in wound healing, but recently it has been used mostly in spherification. Now spherification is the process that uses calcium and alginate to create little liquid field spheres that look like roe, you know, like the little fish eggs. Really small little spheres that can be soy sauce or alcohols, fruit juices. It's been used really widely in modernist food. It's a pretty neat process. Now, the idea for a food spherification technique was first patented in 1942 by a British food scientist working at Unilever. Now, it wasn't until 2003 that the creative culinary team at El Bulli brought spherification into the modernist cuisine. They took the concepts and ideas for spherification to the next level and created the process and techniques that we know today. So today we're gonna make a basic veggie sausage and we're gonna give it a skin. We're gonna do a spherification process on the sausage to give it this skin, like I said, using sodium alginate powder and calcium chloride. So this isn't a process that you're gonna be able to do by hand, whisking it uh, by hand or even using an immersion blender. I definitely recommend using a regular blender to mix up your alginate gel. Now I'm also gonna use a distilled water. Any calcium or any sort of minerals that are present in the water could affect the alginate. And I'm gonna be doing a 2% gel. So it's gonna be 500 milliliters of distilled water with five teaspoons of alginate. Now we're just gonna blend this on a low speed for about 30 seconds. Okay, it looks pretty good. It is a gel, as you can see, thick slime almost. Now, because the fact that this has to be mixed in a blender, it also creates a lot of air bubbles in the mixture. Now, we don't want any of these bubbles, so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna put this in the refrigerator and we're gonna let this sit overnight to allow all of these air bubbles to settle. I'm so excited. Okay, so it's the next day. Our alginate gel is in the refrigerator. All the bubbles are gone, which is what we wanted. We're gonna rehydrate our TVP so I'm gonna use about a cup, maybe a little over. This is just Bob's Red Mill TVP, but you can use whatever TVP you like. And I'm gonna add about a cup of water. Now I'm doing a little extra because we're gonna need that liquid in there for the binding agents. Now through this whole process, I'm using the distilled water because again, we don't want any calcium to get mixed in where it doesn't need to be mixed in. We're gonna use a little bit of protein powder. This is pea protein isolate, about a half of a tablespoon. Now this is going to kind of thick it up, give it more of that sausage texture that we know instead of like the burger texture. Okay, so let's let this rehydrate. I'm gonna throw it in the fridge for about a half an hour. Okay, so now for the fun part, to flavor up our sausage, we have our flavoring, we have our fats, and then last we're gonna do our binding. So let's do our flavoring first. This is gonna be our Italian sausage that I'm making. Now you can make any, you can make a breakfast sausage link, you can make whatever sausage link you want, but let's put this together. So I'm gonna do a tablespoon nutritional yeast, 
about a teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of black pepper. This is just crushed black pepper, teaspoon dried parsley, teaspoon basil, hefty teaspoon crushed red pepper, half teaspoon paprika, three quarter teaspoon fennel, teaspoon garlic powder, teaspoon onion powder. Now I'm gonna do just a little bit, I'm saying probably about a quarter teaspoon of thyme. And then pork has a bit of sweetness to it, so to make our sausage a little sweet, I'm gonna give it about a teaspoon of brown sugar. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this mixture up. This is perfect. Now let's go ahead and put together our fats. So we're gonna do about 20 grams of fat. We're gonna do about 10 grams or half of that 20 grams in coconut oil. We're gonna do some canola oil. Oil. Probably gonna take that almost up to the 20, 20 grams there. And then we're also going to use the oil again from some dried tomatoes. Sun dried tomatoes has a really natural umami flavor. So we're gonna go up to about 25 grams. For flavor, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of Marmite. Now you can use Marmite or Vegemite. Now if you don't have Marmite, Vegemite, if you don't wanna like go to the trouble of buying this ingredient, you can use soy sauce. It's gonna give you a similar richness and meatiness, um, tamari, soy sauce, anything like that will work. And I wanna add some smokiness, so I'm gonna do about a half of a teaspoon of liquid smoke. Perfect. So for the sausage texture, we're gonna use methyl cellulose again. We're gonna add it with a combination of glucomamine. Now this is konjac root flour. This has a very similar binding gum as uh, methyl cellulose does. This is a natural ingredient. So we're gonna do about a little over two grams. Now this glucoma man that I have only comes in pill form, so we, we're gonna use some of that here. And we wanna bring this to around three grams. So at this point, our TVP has been sitting in the fridge for about half an hour. We're gonna add it to the stand mixer here along with our binding agents and then our fats. It's kind of like our fats and like meat flavor. So let's just mix this together. We're just gonna stir it together for a few minutes. So at this point, it looks pretty good. It's, it has like a nice consistency. Let's go ahead and add the seasonings here. That konjac root needs to be mixed to really help bind and form those gums. So. I'm just gonna let this mix and kinda form together into a nice sausage meat. I think this is gonna be great. Perfect, perfect, perfect. This is just absolutely amazing. I'm so stoked about this. So at this point, we're gonna make our sausage links. Now, the only way I know to make the sausage links is by using plastic wrap, but what I'm gonna do is just kind of make almost like a sausage skin, but out of the plastic wrap. So I'm gonna just drop on ball of the meat. Now this is only gonna make a few sausages and kind of form it into a sausage shape. And then just like you would with sausage, we're gonna twist the ends here. I want them to be about hot dog size. So let's just go ahead and repeat this. We should be able to make two or three of these out of this mixture. So there we go, that is our sausage links. We ended up getting four pretty decent sized ones out of that. I'm gonna put these in the freezer and let them sit for about a half an hour or so. I'm gonna check on them. I don't want them to freeze solid. I just want them to get pretty firm. Okay, so the sausage is out. It is frozen. It's pretty tough but it is looking really good. Let's make, make our calcium mixture. I'm gonna use a spray bottle. I'm gonna do about 100 grams of water. Pretty much dead on there. Now I'm also gonna fill this other flat container here. This is gonna be our cleaning container. Now I'm gonna do about two grams of calcium, which is probably around a teaspoon, I'm guessing. And then we're just gonna give this a quick shake. Now this calcium chloride has kind of a thermal reaction. It heats up in the water. So just quickly give it a shake. Oh, this is coming along perfect. Okay, so all we're going to do is take our sausage here. I'm gonna put a skewer on it. Make sure it's completely covered in the gel. We're gonna pick it up. Now I'm gonna allow this to drip because I don't want that thick of a casing on it. This is so wild. Oh, this is so wild. That looks pretty good. Hopefully it's not too thick. So now we're gonna take our calcium spray. I'm gonna spray it over to the, here to the side and just give it a nice even spray all the way around. And that should have formed a casing, which it did. It totally did. There's now a, a casing on this sausage. Unbelievable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take it off the stick here, give it a little bath to get rid of some of that calcium. 
And that's our first sausage. It's so exciting. Let's move on and do some more. I'm gonna to try to make on this next one, I'm gonna to try to make the casing just a little thinner. I'm gonna kind of help this along and just kind of wipe it down a little bit. So yeah, make sure you wipe it down a little bit. You might be able to even make your gel a little thinner than what mine is. Now these are pretty thawed at the moment. It's holding the sausage in and holding it together. We're gonna cook these up just like you would in Beyond Meat. I'm gonna do them in a skillet. So I just got my, my pan here with a little bit of oil. It's getting nice and hot. I can't wait. These things are gonna be awesome. And you'll see very quickly how these act just like a normal casing would. I mean, look at that. Look at that. That is a veggie sausage with a casing. I, I, I'm just, my mind is, my mind is blown. I mean, it's definitely, it's, it's tough. There's some texture to it. It's hot, it's still hot, it's still hot. Ooh, hot. I mean, just look. That looks like meat. I mean, I'll tell you, the smell of this is awesome. Oh my God. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I can't get over how good that is. It has the snap, it has the pop. You know, that snap is created by the casing. Wow, that is good. So good. You're gonna do, you have to be on video for this one. Okay, okay. You have to try this. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's just like sausage. But like the casing and everything? Mm -hmm. No, the casing's perfect. It's delicious, like. Is it close to the Beyond Meat? Oh yeah. It's pretty damn close mm -hmm. to Beyond Meat. I actually think it's a little it bit better. It tastes like sausage, like it has a sausage flavor, you know? <laughs> I'm so excited about this one. Thanks, baby. That's very good. Wow, that is my sausage with a casing. I mean, just this is beautiful. It's beautiful. Throw this on a bun with some peppers and onions. Put it in in whatever you want, throw it on the grill. You can also boil it. These casings will hold up to being boiled. They are not water soluble. So you can boil these. This is an awesome sausage. I'm, besides my, I'm beside myself on what I did here. I'm very beside myself on what I just created. So gang, everybody that's listed over here on the side, these are the members of the Saw Squad. You can join the Saw Squad for only a few bucks a month. We've been getting a lot of new members lately, so I wanna thank all of you for doing what you do because it helps me make what I make here. So I really appreciate you. If you haven't yet, make sure you click the subscribe button to get more videos like these. And here is more videos like these. This is probably gonna be one of my videos on another ingredient. I don't know, we'll see. Thanks.